Hey, good morning. I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear me, but we've got a fun project going today, and we're going to get a protective screen put across the grill here, a grill guard, to keep anything from poking into where the radiator is. It's a cold, rainy day. Not much else we could get done today. So I've got a friend that does metal work, and he's going to help us out. It looks like all I have to do to take this grill guard off and take it with me is four bolts on each side right here. It looks like when I do that, it's also going to drop this front bracket off here. I guess it's like a weight bracket. But we'll go ahead and get that taken apart and get over and get started. All right, so I broke the back set of bolts loose with the impact, but I can't get the impact on the front set. They don't want to break loose with a regular ratchet, and I don't want to go try to find a big breakover bar. So I'm going to drop the loader off the front just enough that I can get clearance to get the impact into those front bolts. So we're over here at my friend Jimmy's house. He really is a skilled machinist, and he's got an impressive amount of equipment in his garage. Of course, here you see a drill press and a small lathe. He's actually got three lathes and a mill here in the shop. That one is a Birmingham. He uses it for smaller machining projects. There's just a bench grinder and an air compressor. And you can see over here is another lathe, lancing, that's the medium size. I'm no machinist, so I won't try to give too much of an in-depth description. Then here is a mill, it's a bridge port. Okay, there's a belt sander, a metal brake. A fairly small metal brake, only 12-inch wide material, but it definitely came in handy for this project. Just to demonstrate the type of metal work he does in this shop, this is the base plate for the metal brake, and it broke in half, and he completely fabricated a replacement. And here you have the largest of the lathes. This one, he said, was actually originally from a World War II ship things close to a hundred years old. Over here we've got a press. So when I came in one of the first things I noticed was the John Deere stool but it took me a little bit to recognize the second one is an old tractor seat with part of an axle 
and then a base made out of a disc. So I really think that one's a lot cooler than the Boughton one. All right, so we've got this expanded metal here and we're gonna fabricate a brush guard on here. And so he's gonna make a template first out of cardboard. Here or? Yeah, he set this up here.
little brake line in it. It'll be identical on each side. Good deal. It's like I'm wasted Every time I see your face I'm losing track of time and space I don't know where I am It's like I'm wasted And I won't waste it And I promise that I I will stand by you forever I can't get you out of my mind I will find Slow this down, my heart is screaming out your name, I'm wasted on you. Here we are, right underneath the stars, so let's get a little reckless. You make me breathless, and I won't waste this. And I promise that I... said I I will stand by you forever and I won't waste it All right, I've got the grill all fixed up, ready to put it back on the tractor. Hopefully the rain that's still going isn't too much of a distraction. We've actually got tornado warnings just south of us, but it looks like it's going to miss us right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this put on and see how it looks. So I had a hard time getting this in between this. Now, it's possible that this heated up a little bit, welding that on, and caused it to draw in a little bit. But I don't really think so. I don't think those tack welds would have heated that up enough to do that. But whether that was the case, or it's just always like this, this didn't want to fit in between here. So what I had to do is slide it on where the radius was and kind of uh, slam it down that way and then I was able to tap it back into place and line up the bolt holes with a rubber mallet. So 
it was kind of annoying to put together, but it wasn't something that I really had to force that hard. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get it put on the tractor. Hold on. Give me a bolt. These first two layers are. Okay, I got one bolt through. Yep, I'm trying to see which direction. I'll show it to you when I come in. Jimmy actually got these hooks done about a week ago, but I'm just now showing them. Alright, so I got these plates from Ken's Bolt-On Hooks. I had a friend weld those plates onto this larger plate. Then we're going to mount those with these bolts with a flat washer and a lock nut. That required us to drill two extra holes in addition to the two that are already there. So we're gonna get that painted up and mounted on. All right, so it looks like more bad weather's headed our way. So I'm gonna get my tools cleaned up and get inside before that hits. But here's what the finished product looks like for the bucket hooks. We've got this nice plate that distributes the weight across the bucket. And we've got these two hooks that we can run a chain through now to strap things to the bucket. All right, and there's the finished grill guard. Now, I spent $62 on a 4x8 sheet of expanded metal, and I only would have probably needed a 3x3 square, but I wanted to make sure we had extra, and I also wanted to give the remaining piece to my friend so that he could do his when he was done with this one, and that's the only money I had invested in this. I always keep some John Deere green paint around. I think it's going to do a great job and protect my grill from getting any kind of brush or anything shoved up in it. I actually think this is probably something that should come standard or at least be an upgrade option when you buy. But either way, I'm happy to have it done. I think it came out great. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Now in just a minute, you'll see links to a couple more of our videos come on the screen right here. And I'll see you next time.